the big brains were originally useful for survival and for mating, and it was a byproduct, an unforeseeable byproduct, that the big brains also happened to be good at mathematics, poetry, music, etc. Um, an analogy which I do find fairly convincing is with a computer. Computers were originally designed as calculating machines, automated, programmable calculating machines. And once you've got an automated, programmable calculating machine, you suddenly find that whether you like it or not, you've also got a word processor, a chess playing ma machine, a, a, a simulating machine. You've got a versatile machine whose versatility wasn't originally planned, but which was inevitable in the manufacture of a calculating machine. I think the same is true of brains. Once you've got a, a brain that's become so big for good survival reasons, once it's been, got beyond, gone beyond a certain threshold of, of size for survival, then automatically it becomes capable of doing formal logic and mathematics and, and poetry. That may not seem a very satisfying explanation, but actually it does satisfy me. Okay. We're going to go over there to the young man at the back. Um, I'm scanning the audience for a woman who'd like to ask a question afterwards. Um, so all men, hands down, please. <laughs> Yes, OK, the next question after that. Can we have the microphone of the young lady there? Thank you. Go ahead. Richard, um, thank you for a um, characteristically stimulating talk. And I'd also like to personally thank you for um, helping to disabuse me of my supernatural religious beliefs. Please send your story into Convert's Corner <laughs> on richarddawkins.net. That's yeah, on the cult website. I read the website regularly. Um, and uh, raising my consciousness to the uh, splendour and wonder of scientific awe. Richard, I'm a trainee psychologist, and with regards to religion and mental health, the um, evidence is uh, unambiguous. People who are religiously active tend to be um, psychologically healthier than people who aren't. Now, I'm not defending um, religion or arguing that God is true. My point is that if we as um, secularists and free thinkers wish to outcompete religion, if you like, um, then we need to follow um, the uh, the, the practice of religion, which is the sense of community that, that religion offers, and is probably the most significant reason as to um, its uh, psychologically um, healthier uh, the reasons why people who are religiously active are uh, psychologically healthier. And so, if we wish to advance as a movement, then we need to um, create that sense of community. Now, given that um, uh, uh, congregating free thinkers has been likened to uh, herding cats. Do you agree with me, and how best do you think we can achieve this? Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, perhaps what we should do is, is start a cult, but which, which, <laughs> which, which I actually have not done. And in a way, um, what you're criticizing is the very fact that I haven't done it, and others like me haven't done it. We don't do cults. Um, now, if you're right that uh, religion predisposes to greater mental health, I would like to see the evidence for that. But as you rightly say, it doesn't for one moment suggest that religious belief is belief in anything true. Uh, it's, it could very well be that believing a certain kind of falsehood does indeed make you happier and, and um, healthier and all sorts of other things. There's no earthly reason why that shouldn't be the case. Uh, if, if anybody, for example, is afraid of dying, uh, then to be told by a priest that you're not going to die could well remove some of the stress from your mental life and make you feel mentally healthier, but of course that doesn't for one moment make it true. Um, okay, so that's that, that, that's that point, but what about this fostering of a sense of community? Mm. Let us shy away from all ideas of, of cult and of um, acolytes and bishops and movements and priesthoods and things like that. Is there something we can do to um, provide some of the sense of community that churches do provide? It's been suggested that one of the reasons why the United States of America is such a, a religious country is that um, it's a country of immigrants and churches did provide a sort of substitute for the extended family that um, immigrants who coming to a strange country feeling lonely and missing their, their support system of, a, of an extended family back in Europe or wherever it was could turn to the church instead. Well, I see no reason at all why um, clubs and societies of free-thinking people shouldn't provide the same structure of God, what a coffee mornings and, and <laughs> creches for children and, and things like that. I don't know if you've ever been to any of these mega churches in, in, in America. 
I mean, they are an entire way of life. There's, there's cafes and restaurants and there's, there's um, basketball courts and, and there's um, places where uh, children can be kept entertained while they're, or rather probably going to be indoctrinated while the parents are. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, I, I would certainly hesitate to do, to do that, but there's no reason why um, groups of free-thinking people shouldn't get together like any other groups. Groups of ornithologists, groups of stamp collectors get together, so, so why not? Herding cats is a problem. Atheists do tend to be of rather independent mind, and so um, that's, that's where the herding cats uh, uh, problem comes from. But I still don't see why it shouldn't be done. I'm not the person to do it. I'm, I'm not um, that way inclined. Uh, but um, I, I would be happy if others did. Okay, thank you. And the young lady over there, thank you. Hi, um, my question is really a matter of curiosity, and it's how do you think religion is actually going to evolve or continue in this country? Do you feel it's declining on a worldwide scale, or you know, at the same time it's also becoming stronger? What do you think the eventual outcome might be? It's very complicated if you look at the world as a whole, because it, in the United States, religion seems to be of increasing influence. In the um, Islamic world, it's certainly showing no sign of decline. Um, the Islamic world is coming visibly into our world, and so we are, we're getting an increasing Muslim presence in Britain and, and Europe, uh, which um, is, is something we can't lose sight of. Christianity does seem to be declining in Britain, although not in America. It's declining in Europe though not in America. It's possible to see Europe as a sort of haven of civilization in between sort of pincer movement of Islam on the one side and, and America on the other, um, with invasions from both, both sides, um, demographic from the Islamic world and, and mimetic from the, from the American uh, world. Um, so if you asked about, about this country, uh, I, I see Christianity continuing to decline. It's not obvious to me that if, it, that if, as Christianity declines, Islam increases, that that's a good thing. It that seems to me to be a, a rather poor exchange. Um, but um, I, I'm not really in the business of forecasting sociological trends. I think we have time for one last question. Yes, if you take the gentleman standing next to you there. The God Squad very often accuse you of being dogmatically logical as if they didn't really have to make sense themselves. I'm not, I'm not m making a point here on that. What I'm asking you is, aren't there from time to time problems with the secularist cause, which I number myself in as well, um, when we get rather dogmatical? And the, 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 the example that I'm going to give you is the, uh, the ban, the hijab ban on, uh, in French schools. But I think your last remark in a way slightly brought me to it because I do think that there is a, a, a demonization of Islam which after all brought us uh, quite a de great degree of, his, of, 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 of scientific invention uh, during the Dark Ages. And uh, I think there's a danger there of, I, I, I'm, I'm really throwing up the possibility that secularists can be dogmatists Yes, th there, is that, there is that risk. Um, in the case of the hijab ban, I think um, what I would say about that is that uh, if, we're, if, the, if French schools decided to allow French um, um, girls to, to wear the hijab, then they should allow the girls to wear whatever they like. What, what we shouldn't have is a bending over backwards to give religious uh, people a free pass where others are not. So if there are um, people in uh, French schools who, who want to wear um, some other garment which is not part of the school uniform. If there is a, a school uniform and if, if, the, if the other girls are compelled to wear the school uniform, I do not think that religion is a good reason to allow people to escape from, from rules. By all means abolish the rule and, and say the children can wear whatever, whatever they like or, or you could say and as long as it's not, I don't know what, I mean not mini skirts below I would have many inches, um, um, you, could, you could do that. But I, I, I really do resent the assumption that, 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 that religion has a kind of privileged excuse not to obey rules, whether it's laws of the land or rules of a, of, of a school. They should obey rules just like anybody else. Religion is not a reason for exceptional treatment in the sight of the law or in the sight of, of any other sort of rules. 
I think that's probably a very good note to wind up the event on. Thank you very much indeed for coming along. Thank you for your questions. Um, so it only remains for me to thank again the Times and the Sunday Times Scotland. And of course, our guest today, Richard Dawkins. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>